Hello guys, in previous video I defined what is a topology uh, on some set X and in this video I'm going to talk about a basis for topology. Before I'm going to give you a definition for a basis for a topology, let's actually give me a motivation why do we need basis. Let me give you an analogy. Take some vector space V. Then we know that for that vector space V there is always a basis which consists of vectors V1 and Vn. And what does it mean like a basis? It means if I'm going to take any vector V, then I can write my vector V as a linear combination of real coefficients of the basis elements. For example, let's take a three-dimensional vector space. Then in this case, I can choose a basis to be a unit vectors along like X, Y, and Z direction. And those vectors are going to generate R3. And the same for basis for topology. A basis for topology, I'm going to explain it later, is going to generate our topology. To define a basis for a topology, what do we need to do? We need to take some set X and some collection uh, of subsets, which we're going to call B. And then we're going to say that B is a basis uh, for topology on X if two conditions are going to follow. So first condition is some sort of existence. If you're going to take any element in our set X, we always want to find some element A in our base, so like some subset of X such that our element X is going to belong to the subset. Or now, as you can see on that picture, you just want to find some open ball around your point X. The second assumption is really interesting. If you're going to take any two elements of your basis, A1 and A2, intersect them, and then your intersection is then empty, then for every element inside your intersection, you always uh, must have some other element A3 of your base, such that uh, that element of your base A3 contains X and is subset of A1 intersection A2. Let's do some example. Um, consider like a real line of the standard topology. And I'm going to define B as uh, a union of open intervals uh, AB. I want to show that B is a basis for our standard topology. For that, I need to check the first and second assumption. For the first assumption, take some X on your real line. And if you're going to go one to the left or one to the right, you're going to obtain an open interval X minus one, X plus one. And that open interval is obviously belongs to B. So that's why the first assumption uh, satisfies. To show the second assumptions, we need to take some two elements of our like basis, then those two open intervals are going to be either intersect or not. If they're going to intersect, then you can see that intersection of A, B, and C, D is going to be an open interval C, B. So any element which is going to belong to intersection of A, B, and C, D are going, is going to lie inside an open interval C, B. That's why the second assumption satisfies. That's why we can see B is going to be a basis for our standard topology. Okay, example number two. Take any set X, uh, any finite set X with elements A1 and AN, and we're going to take a discrete topology. Discrete topology means that uh, all open sets is going to be any subset of our set X. So in other words, topology is equal to the power set of X. Question, what is going to be a basis for the topology in this case? So please think about that question, write your answers uh, below in the comments, and if you want me to show the solution to that question, let me know. Uh, and thank you for watching.